Hey guys, what's up? It's Wolf here, one and only, and welcome to another episode of Dragon Blaze. I've been sitting here for a while, that's why I went to that. But today, I hope you guys are having a great day, and I hope some of you guys are safe from all the floods and hurricane that's been going on down in Florida and everything. Hope you guys are alright. Best wishes. And also, we've. You we know what? We're almost done with Omega. Almost. Uh. I'm actually not going to like get him ultimate this video because I can ultimate him and get Trans Falcon right now but there's a video that is going to require this so I'm waiting it off until the video is done then I'm going to make it during that video so yeah you guys can look forward to that whenever I start working on it probably gonna start working on it or like right after I record these two videos then when I get them all rendered and everything I'll probably start working on them then but as of right now we're just gonna start doing our dailies what do we have today arena all right Let's see if we can find a good matchup wish it was like a random button here Now let's just fight this team and get it over with. Yeah, perfectly honest with you guys, I can't wait for Trans Falcon. And plus, I could make Trans Tracy right now instead of Trans Falcon, but at the same time. I, I don't want to do it right now because Trans Falcon is definitely will be better for my team. Especially the team I have now. Alright, we got that. Let's go to Buster and wrap this up. Let's see. Let's fight this team. Why not? I should both throw them pretty easy, right? Oh, nope. Probably because Falcon is keeping Grace alive. Well, it was keeping him alive. Jeez. That cooldown from Helios is retarded. Not only that, she is shielding him so much. But he is dead. We don't even have to worry about it. Alright, Helios, your turn. Alright, sweet. Pretty good matches. Alright, what else we got? We also have boss read today. And a few other things. But, before we get into that, we're going to take a look at the updates that are coming. I believe the next ones are supposed to be, um, yeah, exactly what I was thinking is, Hellhawk and um, Trigger. So, Hellhawk is, I'm pretty sure it has no, like, cooldowns. It's probably just mostly based on how much he attacks. I'm pretty sure that's what it was. But we're going to go ahead and get into his skills. It's been such a long time since I heard the word Vogar in this game. Just because I think that used to be like one of the like main like mechanics of the warrior, I believe. At least I think that was. But his first skill is called Shadow Cut. And he inflicts a massive amount of damage to one opponent and makes them unable to use their skills for 8 seconds. This skill does not consume Vogar. Okay. Alright, so this skill does not consume Vogar and when hitting a target, it recharges one Vogar to yourself, but it requires two Vogar to use. Alright, that, that seems... I guess that would be confusing for people, but... It's just pretty much, it doesn't use any of your Vogar. And I'm pretty sure one of his passes probably deals with his Vogar. Or just this 
Yeah, his passive probably deals with Vogar, by giving him Vogar points. But his next skill is he inflicts a massive amount of damage to one enemy and causes it to bleed for quite a lot of damage for his um, overtime. Not only that, it only lasts for 11 seconds. Jesus. Actually, that's actually enough time to put in some amazing DPS. The skill does not consume Vogar. And hitting the target recharges one Vogar for yourself. So both of these recharge Vogar. So, yeah, it gives me thinking that his passive is definitely going to deal with his Vogar. Alright, his... Oh yeah, that's Shadow Split. <laughs> I've been forgetting to read the name. And the next one is Reaper Sight. He consumes all his Vogar points and inflicts a huge amount of damage to one target and inflicts additional damage. Oh, fixed damage. Okay, so he is a single target, like, fighter. And he also seems like he's going to be good for, like, destroying bosses. That's definitely going to be interesting to see. And especially since he doesn't have any, like, cooldowns. This man is going to be destructive inside of um, guild loot as well, since it deals with more of like, I guess, cooldowns and everything. Played with the cooldowns and everything, slowed everything down. You can actually fight through that now with Hellhog. All right, his first passive is Deadly Energy, and he increases his physical damage by 50% and deals fixed damage to all in, to all his attacks and drains 28% of his attacks. Hmm. I'm guessing that's like a overtime thing or something? And Hellhawk uses Shadow Conceal for 6 seconds, so he turns invisible. Okay, interesting. When he is hit by a magic attack. Oh! Okay, that's going to be really annoying. You're definitely going to have to have somebody who can attack him while he's like invisible to like get rid of him. He is definitely going to be annoying. All attacks dealt during Shadow Conceal become crit damage and area damage decreases by 40%. Also, all skills activated during Shadow Fiend will still a buff each time you hit the target. Huh. Okay, yeah, Hellhawk is going to be quite annoying in PvP too. I'm kind of scared about this damage as soon as I look down, but we're going to read that after this. <laughs> Alright, his next passive is Scream of Death. Increases all party members' skill attack by 10% and decrease all enemy skill attack by 30%. Okay, so this is pretty much his, um, his group passive. Also, your skill attack increases by the each of the transbotants you have in your party and Hellhawk can detect concealed enemies and receive reduced area damage by 40 percent ah not only that it's gonna be either you're gonna have to need Hellhawk versus Hellhawk or some other character that can actually kill Hellhawk while he's invisible mm. Because that's going to be really annoying just using area damage because that will barely do anything to him apparently. So that's going to be annoying. And not only that, he gets increased 70% to his dex. And that lasts for 11 seconds. That is going to be annoying. Whenever allies and... Okay, so pretty much whenever he kills an enemy or whenever your ally dies or whenever something comes back to life he gets this buff and it stacks by five times are you kidding me this man is literally a, a straight up monster all right his last passive which is his max passive he uses all his vulgar points to remove all enemy buffs and inflicts a huge amount of damage and also a huge amount of fixed damage and conceals himself for six seconds and reduce area damage during conceal by 40% and Shadow Fiend does not consume Vogar. Excuse me? Wait, 
Wait. What is Shadow Fiend now? I see Shadow Cut and Shadow Split, but not Shadow Fiend. Am I missing something here? I must be missing something. Yeah, I feel like I'm missing something here. Unless it's in here somewhere. Maybe I read over it. I'm not sure. But <laughs> I'm going to continue on. But Shadow of Fiend does not uh, consume Boger if it makes a crit hit. So, in short, build crit chance. <laughs> it increases your max Boger by one and prevents consuming Boger when using Reaper's Scythe and recharges Boger to yourself upon hitting the target. I can tell this is going to definitely be a character I'm going to hate so much. I'm going to hate him so much. <laughs> I can already feel it now. But we're going to get into Trigger. Trigger, I like her design. I'll be honest. But her normal DF DFI is not really to my liking. Like, she's pretty weak. Hopefully her trans version will like change my mind. Alright, Piercing Arrow is her first skill. Inflicts a high amount of damage to one target. And if this target is invulnerable, invulnerable is removed and it, <laughs> it hits additional damage. Jesus Christ, these DPS characters are getting insane. Not only that, her normal attacks increase her dex and, and I'm pretty sure for Hellhawk he... Oh yeah, yep. Like always, still beneficial, just like his normal. So, yeah, this is going to be quite useful against, I guess, enemies like um, Trans, Trans King Graham. Whenever he comes out, he's, that's definitely going to be useful against him if you guys are going up against one of those. Alright, her next, her second skill is Arrow of Demolition. And that does a high amount of damage to all targets and decreases all targets defense by 33% for 9 seconds. That sounds pretty good and all targets inf inflicted also get bleed damage. That's way higher bleed damage than Hellhawk. And I'm actually kind of liking it. So it's going to last for 9 seconds. It's 2 along with the defense decrease. So that actually sounds pretty good. The next one is Mighty Fire, which is pretty much your last skill. Gain energy for three seconds. Okay, that that's something that's going to be annoying. Trying to charge up the third skill and having yourself get stunned or somewhat like silenced or interrupted in some kind of way. That's going to be a skill that's going to be quite troublesome, especially with all the stun characters inside of the game. You're going to have to build a lot of immunity to these uh, buffs or have a character that like gives everybody a lot of immunity to not be able to be stunned so yeah gathers energy for three seconds to shoot an arrow that removes all enemies beneficial effects and inflicts high damage and casts a debuff that increases all physical damage received to enemies by 40% for 23 seconds? Jesus. Trigger does not receive any damage while using the skill, but they don't tell you that she can't receive any like like stuns or anything like that. So yeah. She definitely can't be hit, but you know, it's still. Alright, her first passive we're gonna go to now is Tiger's Roar. And this one is whenever and this one is whenever trigger is hit by a ranged attack, she counterattacks by removing a beneficial effect from an enemy and dealing in the oh my god. Okay, and the target becomes airborne for three seconds. And that's a low cooldown. With Helios, you you would not even have to worry about range attacks. So that means that's going to be pretty strong against Llewellyn and a couple of other rangers, especially um, 
<laughs> Bloodwind. He is definitely going to have a troublesome time dealing with her. Okay, her second skill is Titan's Power. And this is probably her um, group effect. Trigger inflicts 10 times the damage at a random when dealing normal damage. And, okay, whoa, hold up. That sounds quite massive. I need, I need like a damage cap on that. Like, telling me like how far that damage is gonna go. Her third attack always inflicts max dam maximum damage. Hmm. That, that sounds pretty strong. I don't know yet though. That's that's gonna have to be something I have to see myself instead of like actually believe in that being like really strong. All right, the rest of it is increase all party members additional uh, buff attack by 34% and your own by 30% for each boat inside of your party. Yep, group damage. So he's she's mostly used for uh, raids. Okay. Pretty straightforward. And additionally decreases uh, triggers received damage from range by 50%. Annoying. Alright, her last and her max passive is trigger inflicts two times the damage at random to addition to all her skills. And when trigger uses mighty fire, she ignores 100% of the enemy's defense and inflicts 100% crit damage and increases her own physical attack by 50 okay that that is going to be annoying both of these characters are going to be quite the monsters inside of like raids that I can't say but trigger and eh, she's all right but Hellhawk is really strong so far but trigger it's like definitely changed my opinion on her through like her normal DFI it's quite all right. I I might get her in the future, maybe. Not really sure. But let's go ahead and do this while we're here. Okay, why did I go with all the normal? But it's definitely going to be interesting to see these guys like in action. Hold up, let me go ahead and. Oh yeah, she's on my paladin. I'll be fine without her for today. I'll just put this instead. Oh, man. Almost forgot my camp. <laughs> but tell me what you guys think of both of them. Do you think they're going to be really strong or, or you think they're going to be quite alright for the meta right now? Even though I don't really like following the meta, I mostly just like making my own team, trying out different things. You know, seeing what's really interesting. See if I can make my own meta. And beat the current meta that people are going through. Oh my, will we actually pass this? Without Helios this time? I don't know about that. Never mind. I take that back. I don't think we are. I mean, I said that last time, but then we passed it out of nowhere. But yeah. Oh. Oh my. Okay. Yeah, I said that last time, and we just mowed on through that. See, the more we change up our team, the, the better it becomes. Really hoping we can beat our score from last time then. But I've been like really farming. I got like huh, before this video started I had like 300 like 385 uh, light essence I think. Then I used a few just to um, just to get a mega to plus two. No I had him at max before this video started. Then I caught myself before I used all my um, triple S allies. And that would have been bad because I needed them for the video that I was uh, getting ready to make. So, yeah. Oh, seems like we 
did not gain the upper hand here. Yeah, I think we'll probably live a lot longer, though. Maybe. But seeing this, I am definitely behind on some damage without Helios. So this is why I say Helios is, like, pretty much the meta herself. Just because of that insane cooldown she gives. So that's why I do need to work on her. Yeah, we're, like, really behind in points. But I've noticed one thing, when I um, have an, like an invisibility shield on, that Ravengill's like minions, they, I don't think they get it. I think they the only thing they actually have a chance of getting is like the actual like shield instead of invincibility. I don't think they receive that. Most of the time, I can't really tell. He is definitely hitting off those shields like hard as hell though. I already know one person who cannot wait for this update and that will be um, Def. He has been looking forward to Hellhawk uh, like a lot. Hopefully that helps him out with some of his damage he's been lacking lately. You know, get, get his team like back up to the top because he used to be like the highest member in our um, guild. Kind of fell off on damage. Mostly because he only uses rogues. Once he maxes Hellhawk, he's definitely going to be up there again. I would not doubt it. So, I'll be waiting for you. Well, we'll be waiting for you at the top, Def. So you can take over the whole guild and everything again. <laughs> Wait, are we going to actually make it there? Uh, yeah, I don't think we are. He's hitting ha He's hitting really hard. Yep. That is a big no. Actually, we probably could pass it. Probably. Nah. But, eh. Eh. Nah, I don't think we're gonna make it. Especially since Landy heals aren't like really powerful right now. I don't think we're gonna make it. Yeah, we're not. <sighs> Darn it. So close though. Like really close. But guys, that's pretty much all the time I have for today. Man, I have been grinding. Yeah, see? Look at all that. <laughs> I had so much essence from this whole week. And that's literally a week of, like, farming. For, like, the... Like, farming on, like, the buffs. Whenever the time comes around. I just hop on and just start farming the hell out of it. But, guys, that is the progress we have made. I cannot wait until we, like, get Trans Falcon. Then when Margaret comes out, we'll get her. Then we'll pretty much have our standard team for now. Even though I plan on replacing, you know, a probably somebody around here. But, you know, I'm not going to tell you say who because then they'll get mad at me. But, until then guys, I'll see you guys next time. Peace out.